Competitive Pokemon is not easy. It takes a lot of skill to battle and win games and even more to team build. However, behind every successful victory lies a great team. Now competitive Pokemon teams are a lot different than your in-game teams. Generally, an in-game team will consist of your favorite Pokemon and Pokemon which you caught along the way in your journey. However, the theory behind building a competitive Pokemon team is very complex. You cannot just throw in 6 of your favorite Pokemon and expect good results. You might win a game or two, but ultimately you are going to end up in the bottom of the ladder, struggling to achieve anything. Well, the question is, what makes a good competitive Pokemon team? To simplify the answer, every style of team whether offensive or defensive is made up of a strategical group of Pokemon which is called the core of a team. Now, this core can be as simple and old as the infamous Calm Bliss duo or as modern and complex as the Goldengo Hazard Stack King Gambit. Today, we are going to be looking at the top 5 cores in competitive Pokemon Scarlet and Violet singles or in other words, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet OU. Just a disclaimer before we move on to the list, this is not official. I have created this list from my own personal experience playing Scarlet and Violet OU for a long time in the absolute peak. So without further ado, let's begin. At number 5, we have the infamous Alice in Wonderland core or popularly known as the Psychic Spam. This is the only core you are going to be seeing in Psychic Spam teams. It starts off with an NDD which is going to get up the Psychic Terrain. You will always see a Hatrain accompanying the NDD holding an eject button. The Hatrain is going to eject out into a Poltergeist and this Poltergeist is always going to get a self smash up and then proceed to sweep your entire team down or take out a lot of members from your team leaving you in a bad spot. This Poltergeist is always going to be holding a Focus Sash and Terror types are going to be 90% of the time fighting and 10% of the time fairy. An extremely deadly core which has seen numerous success both in tournaments and in the ladder. However, despite being so deadly, this core is number 5 because it has quite a lot of options to get checked. Poltergeist is not the fastest Pokemon out there and even at plus 2 speed, it gets outsped and taken down by let's say a booster energy iron valiant which is extremely common. Even unaware Pokemon can check this relatively well and if that unaware Pokemon, let's say a Dondozo, tears into a dark type, then the whole team is going to face a lot of problems and might even end up losing. Nonetheless, this core is very good and definitely deserves the rank 5 spot in our rating. At number 4, we have the Golden Stack. This is one of the most dangerous defensive cores in the game. If someone doesn't have the right tools, they can end up losing in a matter of turns. The fact that this core is extremely easy to use makes it very deadly. It generally starts off with a Tinglu, filling your whole field up with hazards. Tinglu is a Pokemon with very high bulk, and most of the times, it will manage to get up Stealth Rock and at least one layer of Spike before fainting. This core will always have a Goldengo which is a must. Main job is to block Defog. Given the high usage of Corvignite, Knight which defogs on even fire type strong Pokemon such as Cinderace, Goldengo is a sure shot way to block Defog and even given the Ghost type of Goldengo, it also blocks Rapid Spin from a Great Tusk and manages to do massive damage with the Stab Signature Make It Rain. Now, being unable to defog, your team will get heavily chipped down upon entry and end up losing in the end. A Rodom Wash is seen accompanying this core because it pairs up really well with Goldengo. With correct prediction, it can come in on a Great Tusk which has clicked Earthquake predicting a Spin Block and risks getting one it killed by a Strap Hydro Pump. The reason I put this core at number 4 because Hatrin has a sky high usage currently and completely shuts down this core. Even heavy duty boots is a super common item which causes a lot of problems. This core lacks the offensive firepower and if it doesn't manage to chip the opponent down with hazards, 
it will eventually end up losing. Let's not forget, Goldengo expecting a rapid sprint from a great tusk risks getting destroyed by a knockoff or an earthquake. Nonetheless, this code is extremely dangerous in the right hands and this is why we are putting it at number 4. At number 3, we have the most popular and common code in the official singles metagame. I would say that this code is the most fun to use among all. This is also the most used code in the official singles meta, having a tremendously high success rate in the ladder and in tournaments as well. So at number 3, we have the Hyper Offense code. This is always going to be a lead Glimora, getting up as much hazards as possible. Also, having a super high base 130 special attack, if it can take down a Pokemon after getting hazards then it's a total blessing. Now this Glimora is a suicide lead, which means that its job is to get hazards up and faint. Now this Glimora is accompanied by a booster energy iron valiant which is a pinch hitter. Its main job is to take a Mon or two down, throw some heavy hits, chip Mon down and faint. Now you might see that two members of this core's job is to hit and faint. And getting Mons fainted out is generally not a good sign. However, it serves a greater cause here, where the third member of this core comes in. King Gambit has the ability Supreme Overlord, which means that the more your Pokemon faint, the stronger it gets. Glimora and Iron Valiant doing damage and fainting mid-game makes this Pokemon very strong. Having Stab Sucker Punch, a base 135 attack, King Gambit is most likely going to clean up late game getting the massive boost. This is why this core is so easy to use and so effective. However, this core has its downside, the biggest being unaware. Hyper offensive teams in general struggle to beat down unaware Dondozo, unaware Skeledurge, Having no recovery, this core gets chipped down and end up losing. Also, fat Pokemon like Atoxapex and Corviknight can give this core a lot of problems. This is why the Hyper Offensive core is at number 3 in our list. At number 2, we have an extremely popular core or as I like to call it, the Moonwalk core. For an old gen player, this might come as a shock because Sun as a weather has always been below average. However, in Generation 9, Game Freak has decided to twist things up a bit. Since Generation 3, when weather was introduced properly, Sand has always been ruling the weather war followed by Rain and Sun has always been the worst. However, in Generation 9, it's the complete opposite. From best, now Sand is the worst weather and the top spot has been taken by none other than Sun. And this is also considering the fact that Torkoal being the only Sun Setter which is the worst Pokemon compared to all the other weather setters like Tyranitar and Pelipper. Well, given the release of Paradox Pokemon with the Scarlet exclusives having the ability Protosynthesis, Sun is causing a major problem in the Scarlet and Violet OU tier. With the release of Walking Wake, whose signature move is one of the most broken moves of all time. Hydro Steam is a water move whose base power, instead of getting reduced under Sun, gets a 50% boost. From an 80 base power, its power jumps to base 120 under Sun. Not only that, Walking Wake gets Protosynthesis with some really interesting stats, which allow you to alter Walking Wake's in-game capabilities. By that I mean, you can make a Walking Wake super fast hitter getting a speed boost under the sun or you can straight up make it a one hit one kill cannon with the correct DVs getting a special attack boost under the sun. Now coming to Roaring Moon, a Pokemon with a base 139 attack which also gets photosynthesis and its in-game capabilities can also be altered like Walking Wake, making it either one of the fastest Pokemon in the tier or one of the strongest. You decide whether you want the speed or the power. The combination of Walking Wake plus Roaring Moon or as I like to call it the Moonwalk is extremely dangerous which can take down any form of team in a matter of few turns. A Pokemon like Great Tusk which resists and is most likely going to come in on a Roaring Moon risks getting you turned on and then Walking Wake comes out and clicks Hydro Stream and picks a kill. The Moonwalk pair sings amazingly well and takes down teams with ease. 
Now getting to the weakness of this call, talk hole is the weak link. It has no recovery and can be easily chipped down. And once talk hole is gone, the offensive potential of this team falls drastically. The moonwalk core is always running a choice item and once a Pokemon is locked into a choice move, there is getting set up on. Given the loads of dangerous setup sweepers in the Scarlet Violet OU tier, the scariest being Dragonite. Dragon dancing in a Hydro Steam lock walking wake and proceed to sweep the whole team down with e-speed. Nonetheless, this core is extremely dangerous and difficult to handle, hence it deserves the second most spot in our ranks. Now it's time for number 1. At number 1, we have the Holy Trinity. This combination is the deadliest core in the tier currently because it can do whatever you need it to do. In fact, this core can effectively shut down all the other cores which I mentioned in the list. A Corviknight is the greatest menace to side spam teams because it is one of the few Pokemon which can take a plus 2 Shadow Ball from a Poltergeist and kill it off with Brave Bird. Nuzzle Hatrin is a menace and come calm mind and shut down hyper offense size spam teams on its own. The golden stack core is completely shut down by Hatrine and even if Tinglu manages to get up hazards, Goldengo cannot possibly check Corviknight and Great Tusk to remove hazards and eventually end up losing. The combination of Corviknight and Great Tusk gives a lot of problems to hyper offense. The fact being that special defensive Corviknight can effectively check Iron Valiant and King Gambit struggles to break Great Tusk, this core can shut down Hyper Offense cores on its own. And last, Roaring Moon, though being very strong, is very well checked by both Hatrin and Great Tusk. Corvig Knight can check Wake to a decent extent and especially once when Corvig Knight shed us into a water type, then Walking Wake is kinda shut down and will really struggle. This core can fit in almost every team and you can be sure that it is going to put in a lot of work. Having successfully made it to rank 1 in the ladder and a ton of success in tournaments including the SPL, there is no doubt in my mind that the Holy Trinity Core is the best core in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet OU. So friends, these are the strongest cores in the official singles metagame or as we like to call it, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet OU. At number 5, we have the Sci-Spam Core. At number 4, we have the Golden Stack. At number 3, we have the Hyper Offense Core. At number 2, we have the Moonwalk Core. At number 1, we have the Holy Trinity. Do let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this and definitely let me know what you think about this core. If you have something else in mind, do let me know in that as well as we always like to have a healthy discussion. And make sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video because we are on the road to 10k. So let's get that goal. Once again, thanks for watching. Stay safe, take care and peace my dear friends.